this is lecture 43 so uh, maybe you should turn that the fan on Okay, so we've been looking at some very simple coding schemes, looking at how to decode them, the hard decision decoder and the soft decision decoder, which is better, and how do you quantify how much better it is, etc., etc. Okay, so I gave you a simple example of a repetition code, and we saw that it didn't really work in terms of coding gain. Okay, so what we'll see next is a is a way of doing coding which makes it very easy on the uh, encoder for encoding and all that. Okay, so it gives you a structured way of doing coding. It's called linear block codes okay okay so when you want to do a linear block code at the receiver what you do is very similar to before the block diagram will be always the same you first compute you first accumulate k message bits and then the encoder has to produce right has to produce some n code word bits okay so this is what we've been looking at so far and I made the comment that if, if you're planning to do a lookup table like implementation for going from M to C then if K becomes 1000 or 500 or something it becomes really impossible to do any uh, any implementation of the encoder the lookup table becomes very large 2 power 500 is a very large number okay so and we also saw that for K equals 1 we, we weren't getting any coding gain in fact it's true that for low K you won't get much coding gain you have to go to larger and larger block lines okay so for all that you want to have put something here which is very simple some encoder here which is a very simple operation so if you were to do a linear encoder what you do is the following suppose your message vector is m1 m2 so on till mk remember each of these things is a bit okay so if your code word vector is c1 c2 uh, so on till cn okay n is larger than k right so in a linear encoder ci will be uh, xor of bits of m okay so this is a way in which you can define what a linear encoder would do each code word bit is an xor of selected bits from the message okay so that's the way a linear encoder operates okay so this in general would look like mi1 xor mi2 right so let me be careful here so, so you see how it would look right so dot 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 mi some d okay so you pick i1 through id in some fashion for each i okay and then you do an xor of those bits so that's this is a definition of a linear encoder so this is how a linear encoder works okay so 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 this simplifies matters right at least at least from an implementation point of view okay without looking at anything else this clearly simplifies matters o only thing that the encoder has to remember now is what for each i what is the i1 through id and what is d okay so, right once you remember that you just take those from the from somewhere they take the pull, pull out those messages xor them and send it out okay so this is, this is an easier implementation than having a 2 power 500 lookup table okay so that much is clear okay so this is clearly possible okay so this is one way of uh, doing encoding okay so now if you do such an encoding and look at the collection of code words you have produced okay so that will that will give you a code and that's called a linear code okay so it's linear because if you take two such code words and xor one with the other position wise you will get another code word okay so all these things you can prove okay so what you get is a linear code we won't spend too much time over all those things in this class at least i'll just quickly brush over uh, what you get okay so uh, so in practice this XOR is simplified further okay so what people do is for I between 1 and K CI you simply set as equal to MI okay so this is a general linear code what I'm going to write down here is what's called a systematic encoding okay so this is a general linear encoder the systematic linear encoder Okay, we'll do this. Okay, first k bits that you put out will be equal to the first k message bits. And then for i from k plus 1 to n, you do the same thing as before. C, C i is m i 1 x or so on till m i d. And depending on i, you pick a different set of message bits to x or. Okay, but the first k message bits 
you uh, for first k code word bits will be equal to the message bits so this is a version this is called a systematic encoder okay so if you just stare at it the picture on the left might look much more general than the picture on the right okay so you might say you can get many more codes from doing general linear coding than doing systematic coding but the strange thing is what it's not true systematic is good enough okay the reason is both of them give you linear codes and then you can do gaussian elimination and go from one to the other okay so both of them are different encoders but every code turns out it has a systematic encoding so you don't have to worry about non systematic codes it's enough if you do systematic encoding that covers all the linear codes that you might want to cover okay so we will look at a version of systematic encoding only okay so i'm going to give a couple of examples the first example will be the repetition code and the next will be other examples of doing some simple linear codes and how to describe them etc etc okay that's what i'm going to do next okay so here are examples the first and simplest example is a repetition code okay so if you look at k equals 1 n equals 3 what does the repetition code do it sets c1 equals m1 c2 equals what m1 there's only one m1 okay so you can't do anything with it right so you either choose to send 0 or 1 or you send the message and it's better to send the message than sending 0 or 1 so you have m1 m1 okay so these are the this is the linear encoder for the repetition code so you see repetition code is a linear code okay so if you look at the code itself it's what 0 0 and 1 1 1 if you xor any two of these vectors you'll get some vector in the code okay so you see that that works out it's a linear code okay so c1 c2 c3 is uh, m1 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 so is it systematic yeah it is systematic okay so you can see that it's systematic okay so here's another example of a uh, so so i'll call it uh, even parity code okay so i'll take uh, k equals uh, i don't know 7 then n equals 8 okay so i'm going to set so if k is 7 n is 8 i have seven message bits and eight code word bits okay so i have to produce eight code word bits so i'm going to set ci equals mi for i between 1 and 7 and then c8 is going to be m1 xor m2 xor so on till m7 all the bits are going to be xor together okay why did i call it a even parity code so if you do this the number of ones in any code word will be will be even do you see that your message the seven bits of message can have an even number of ones or an odd number of ones but the eighth bit you add is the parity of that so if you had an even number of ones it will be zero if you had an odd number of ones the eighth bit will be one making the total number of ones in c even okay so that's why it's called an even parity code okay c has even number of ones okay so one more thing you can check is that this code is also linear you take any two code words then add them if you have an even number of ones and even number of ones you add you'll still only get an even number of ones you can show this okay so these are interesting things to look at for a vector okay so binary vectors is easy to show that's an even parity code okay so 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 lo the lot of questions that can be asked for instance so so uh, in the notation for a code people usually denote a code as an nk code so this is notation okay so linear codes are denoted as by n comma k okay so nk in this case for the even parity code it would be a 8 comma 7 code and any nk code how many code words does it have let's call the size of the code number of code words which is 2 power k okay so these are all some simple terminologies and then the rate of course is k by n okay so all these things are standard notation so the nk code captures all that information okay but of course n and k alone does not fix the exact code okay you can't know exactly what code it is right for 8 comma 7 how many different codes can i have systematic encoding so fix the systematic encoder in your head how many different codes can i have how do you answer that question so the only freedom you have is in c8 
so it's a question now how many bits of m1 you choose to xor to get to get c8 okay so how many in how many ways can you choose it what are the different subsets 2 power 7 right so you have so many different possibilities yes all of them will give you seemingly different codes maybe some of them will be the same you don't know okay you have to think about it carefully what will be same what will be different and all that okay all right so that's uh, that's the definition of code i'm going to give you one more example just to round it out and then we'll go back and look at uh, the definitions okay so let me make sure i get this example right okay so i'm going to do the 7 4 hamming code Okay, so this is named after Hamming who invented this codes long long back. Okay, so this is how it works. 7, 4. Okay, so that immediately tells you the number of message bits is 4 and the number of code word bits is 7. Okay, so since I am doing systematic encoding, I am going to set CI equals MI for I between 1 and 4. There is no problem. And then C5 I am going to set as, okay, so hopefully I will get this right. Okay, I'm going to set it as M1, M2, XOR, M3. I need three parity bits. Okay, and then C, C6 is going to be M1, XOR, M2, XOR, M4, and C7 is going to be Is this working out correctly? Is it okay? People know enough of this. Okay. Is that okay? Right. So I think this should work out. So let me do a careful check here. Hopefully I did that right. Okay. So I'll have to think uh, in my head about this. Yeah. I think this is okay. Right. This should work out uh, okay. Okay. In case there is some trouble. I will come back and uh, fix it later. Okay, so I think this should work out. Okay, all right. So this is the 74 Hamming code. How many code words will be? Will there be 16 code words, right? So 16 code words. It's not uh, much of a problem. Okay. So so this is one way of specifying a linear code. Okay. So how do you specify it? You specify the systematic encoder. You say what are the combinations you do? You get some uh, code word. Okay. So there are several other equivalent ways which just manipulate the specification and they specify it differently okay so one such way is called the generator matrix description okay so the specifying the systematic encoder like i said is one way of specifying the linear code completely okay so what do i mean by specifying the linear code okay i have to tell you how to generate all the code words okay so once i tell you how to generate all the code words you are just, I have specified the linear code. So, all these things are different ways of doing the same thing. Okay. So, generator matrix is another way of doing it. I will show you how to do it for the uh, for the Hamming code. You will see it's, it's, it quickly generalizes. It is very easy. So, I want to come up with a matrix G such that C equals M times G. Okay. So, this is my objective. Okay. So, how do I come up with the matrix G so that C equals M times C? If I do that, then I have a generator matrix this is supposed to be a generator matrix so before we go any further what should be the dimensions of g so this is 1 by k this is 1 by n so this should be k by n okay so that's the first uh, way of doing it and the next thing to look at is one can come up with g row by row there's several ways of doing it i'll just give you one way of doing it one can come up with the g row by row how will i find the first row of g first k rows will be i k rows k columns okay so there are so many ways people are quickly seeing what i'm going to say okay so you can see this is very easy to construct g but look at the question i asked the first row of g will correspond to a yeah correspond to what message okay so if your message is one followed by k minus one zeros then what will c be it will be the first row of G. Do you see that? Okay. So, how do you pick out rows of a matrix? Multiply on the left with a vector which is 1 at the corresponding 
place, right? So if I pick the message to be one followed by k minus one zeros, then the code word corresponding to that will be the first row of G. Okay, so that's one way of thinking about it. Another way of thinking about it is the way he said it. Just look at the equations and then figure out what this matrix will have to be. Okay, so let me give you give you an example. I'll do this example for the 7-4 Hamming code. It's complicated enough that you should be able to do it. So C1 equals M1, C2 equals M2, C3 equals M3, C4 equals M4. So just based on that, he was able to say that the first four columns and the first four rows together will make a identity matrix. And then what about C5? It's right there, right? It's right there. So I'm going to put it together in a matrix. I'm going to say C equals M times K1, okay, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, and then I have to say what else has to go here. Okay, so remember one more thing. This is one confusion here. So usually when you multiply, you might get M1 plus M2 or something. So now we want M1 plus M2 plus M3. So I'm going to put 1, 1, 1, 0. Okay, so what, what is my plus exactly here in this multiplication? Okay, so I'm dealing with bits. I can't add 1 plus 1 plus 1 and say it's 3. It's not 3, right? How do I interpret plus? Modulo 2. Okay, so all your additions are modulo 2. Okay, so that makes, that cross, bridges, bridges the gap between addition in matrix algebra and the binary XOR that you have. Okay, so there's no confusion here actually. If you go back to linear algebra, people define what are called fields and then vector spaces over fields and then tra transformations as, as matrices. Okay, so matrices with entries from a field are very well understood. Okay, and it turns out 0, 1 is the smallest field that you can have. It's called the binary field. Addition is modulo 2. Multiplication is, well, trivial, but still modulo 2 you can think of. Okay, so, so it's all very clear from theory. All the linear algebra you learn still applies. Okay, so, but anyway, it doesn't matter. We can, we can interpret addition modulo 2 and write out this matrix very easily. So, what will be the next column? 1, 1, 0, 1. What will be the last column? 0, 1, 1, 1. Okay. So this is the way in which I did it. Okay. So this is the generator matrix. And remember, if you if you go from these equations to the generator matrix, it's nice to work column by column. Just fill out column by column because that corresponds to each CI. Right? That's how you multiply. You take this row, multiply it to a particular column, you get that corresponding entry. Right? So it's a very easy easy thing to do. I can see people are nodding, but it can get confusing when you see some questions in the exam. Okay, so make sure you understand how this matrix was obtained. Okay, and the next step is understanding the rows of G. What is the first row of G? You obtain the first row of G as the code word when your message is what? One followed by three zeros. If it's zero one zero zero, you get the second row. Okay, so that's another interpretation for this. Okay. So, so, so what about the, all the code words of the code? Okay, so once I write this down, how will you succinctly describe all the code words of the code in terms of the generator matrix? Yeah, what is that thing called? Linear combinations of rows. Of it's the row space. Okay, so it's the row space of G. So the generator matrix <coughs> has a complete specification of the code. It's the row space of the code. Okay, so that those are all various ways of thinking about it. So once you think about it that way, you see the distinction between the non-systematic and systematic version disappears. Okay, it's just row space of a matrix. So you can always do Gaussian elimination on a matrix to get it to get an eye on the left hand side. So whether it's systematic or non-systematic, it's okay. okay. It works out okay. Okay, all right. So this is a generator matrix description. Let, let's, let's spend a couple of minutes and then write down generator matrices for the repetition code n equals 3 k equals 1 k repetition code the 3 1 repetition code okay so maybe i should write it that way I'm sorry okay what's the generator matrix what will be the dimensions 1 by 3 and what will it be 1, 1, 1. Okay. Okay. So another way of thinking about it is the rows of the generator matrix will be a basis for my code word space. Okay. So there's dimension, this basis, all these linear algebra terms you learn will come and help you 
if you learned the linear algebra well okay so it's no problem though okay so what about uh, the last example the 8 comma 7 even parity code it's also called the even weight code I mean, it's, it's even parity code what's the generator matrix yeah so you have i7 which is a 7 by 7 identity followed by an all ones so maybe all ones will have a shorthand notation okay so so that is the uh, that is the generator matrix so it's easy to come up with the generator matrix okay so the next matrix that people use to describe linear block codes is what's called a parity check matrix it's once again a simple manipulation of the equations but except that it can be a little bit uh, non trivial and we'll again go back to linear algebra finally and justify why that makes sense but initially i'll start off start it off as a manipulation of the equations that we had okay so let's look at a parity check matrix is just arranging the equations in different way okay so instead of looking at c equals m times g i want to bring everything in my equations right now i had c equals m times g i want to bring everything to one side and i have and, and to have zeros on the other side okay so if you try that you get what's called a parity check uh, matrix okay so it's very simple for the systematic part you typically won't have any equations okay so remember in all my uh, 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 systematic encoding i have ci equals mi for i between 1 to k and ci for the other i's okay so k plus 1 to n is what is an xor of m is from 1 to k instead of m i can also put c why not right i can put c but ci equals m i for 1 to k so instead of saying m i 1 i'll say simply ci 1 ci 2 likewise still ci some d okay so i can do this so now how do i get an equation to get zero on the right hand side you bring everything to the left side so how do you bring xors to the left okay when you do modulo 2 addition it doesn't matter whether you do plus 1 or minus 1 okay so minus 1 mod 2 is what plus 1 so whether you do minus 1 or plus 1 doesn't matter so basically this equation will become the same as ci xor ci1 xor ci2 xor cid equals 0 on the right hand side okay so how many such equations will i get n minus k equations okay so these set of equations when collected together in a matrix form what's called a parity check matrix okay so it's very easy to come up with a structure for the parity check matrix also i'm going to do it for the example of the hamming code and then you'll see the generalization it's very easy okay it's quite trivial to come up with the parity check matrix okay so once again the example of the hamming code okay what are the equations we had we have c5 equals c1 xor c2 xor c3 am i right then we had c6 equals c1 xor c2 xor c4 so this is the 7 4 hamming then c7 equals c2 xor c3 xor c4 is it okay so now i want i'm going to collect everything to the left side so the set of equations i get will be c1 plus c2 plus c3 plus c5 is 0 c1 plus c2 plus c4 plus c6 equals 0 c2 plus c3 plus c4 plus c7 equals 0 so i want to collect them together and write it as one matrix multiplying c transpose being equal to 0 transpose well 0 0 3 in this case okay so this is what i want so what should this matrix be okay so here you will find filling it out row by row is much more easier okay so instead of you try column by column you can also do column by column there's nothing wrong in that but filling it out row by row is much much easier okay so the first row will be what 1 1 1 1 1 1 0 1 0 0 am i right okay and the next one will be 1 1 0 1 0 1 
0. The last one will be 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay, so this is typically denoted H and that's called the parity check matrix. Okay, so this is Hamming. Okay, what will be its dimensions? If you have an NK code, it will be it will be n minus k cross n and the property that it will have okay the what's the property that generator matrix had any code word can be written as m times g so the row space of g denotes the specifies the code it turns out even the parity check matrix completely specifies the code it has to right i just took all the equations and played around with it and gave it gave it to you in another form so obviously the parity check matrix also completely specifies the matrix but to know exactly what it is you have to know a little bit of linear algebra okay so what is the terminology for that yeah the null space of h is the code okay so what's called null space the set of all c such that h times c transpose is zero okay so remember once again h times c transpose is done modulo 2 okay don't come up with some 2 and 4 and 6 and all that it's all modulo 2 okay so that's the thing so so null space of h equals row space of g equals the code okay okay so the rows of h are what now yeah there will be vectors which are orthogonal to my code space so every code word in my code will be orthogonal to the rows of h so that's how we define it so for instance if we take a plane a 2d plane in three dimensions there's two ways of specifying it what are the two ways of specifying it think of a plane going through the origin so that it becomes a linear subspace okay there are two ways of specifying it how do you specify it you either specify two two uh, two vectors any two vectors or two vectors which are two two things that are not that are linearly independent right so they should not have a zero angle between them any angle or you can specify a one vector which is normal to the plane so both of them are equivalent ways of specifying a linear space so you either specify a basis or what's called a dual basis okay so spaces in this ortho orthogonal to the whole thing okay so both of them are equivalent ways of doing it so null space and row space are like that. so if so you saw this g was what g was a k by n matrix as h naturally became a n minus k by n uh, matrix okay so these are all different ways of specifying it so you'll see terms thrown around here and there okay so why did we do all this we did all this because there are several reasons first of all these matrices help in compact description of the code okay and they are used at the encoder and decoder okay so instead how do you specify the equations that are used to the encoder you specify the matrix okay so that gives you the equations okay so one more observation i want to make about h okay so g you generally think of in systematic form it will have an identity here i k and then it will have some matrix p what will be the dimension of this matrix k by n minus k so that will be the dimensions of that matrix so initially you will have an identity part okay the first k will be identity and the next will be some arbitrary form if you take this g okay look at the equations push everything to the left side and convert it into a parity check matrix it turns out the parity check matrix has a very very simple form which you can quickly figure out okay it will be p transpose i n minus k okay so you can check that for the hamming case and you'll see that it was true and it has to be true in general it's just a simple way of moving the equations around it's no real uh, great thing here and it's also very standard in linear algebra okay so this is how you find the row space and null space of a matrix you do gaussian elimination and the basis for the null space becomes p transpose i so it's a very easy way of doing things but in this case it becomes equally easy okay so this is the parity check matrix and this is generator matrix so any questions on any of this it's all very basic stuff but still uh, it's good to just spend some time thinking about it okay so what we're going to do next is work out the generator matrix and parity check matrix for the two other examples that we saw okay so for the 3 1 repetition code Okay, 3-1 repetition code. What is G? We already saw what that was. 
one one one. What is the parity check matrix? Yeah. So one one. Uh, one one zero one zero one. Okay, so anyway, you can do row wise, row wise, column wise, anything you want. Okay, one one zero, one zero one. Okay, so so suppose suppose you have to do the. I'll do one more example before I go to the next one. I'll do the eight comma one repetition code. There's a good reason why I'm doing it. You'll see quick enough, quickly enough. What will be G? Yeah, eight ones, right? So one 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 one. What will be H? It will be one seven transpose and then I seven. Is that okay? So this is the way of doing it. Okay. So let's see the last example. Let's see the eight comma seven even parity code. The generator matrix was what? We already saw it. It's I seven one seven transpose. And what will be the parity check matrix? Okay, so it will be what? I put a long, big parity check matrix, but the parity check matrix is simply one, 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 one. Okay. Okay. So anyone wants to make any observations about? All these things I've written down. What do you think the last two examples are? Okay, so it turns out the 8-1 repetition code is the dual of the 8-7 even parity code. Okay, so it's an interesting way of looking at these things. So you might say the generator matrix here and the parity check matrix here have a relationship. The generator matrix here and the parity check matrix here have a relationship. Yeah, they do. They're actually the same thing. Okay, so that's how we do. It. Okay, so this how I got this H is clear, right? So it's very easy to see. Okay, so there are several ways of figuring these things out. One more way of thinking about it is every code word in my even parity code has even weight. Okay, and I know my dual space is only one-dimensional, so I need only one vector from the dual space, and the all ones vector has to be orthogonal to every even weight vector. Why? If you do a dot product of all ones vector with any even weight vector, what will happen? You will get an even number, which is actually zero mod two. So it makes a lot of sense. So all these things make sense. Okay. Okay. So I think that's uh, enough talk about matrices and all that. So let's proceed uh, so far and then do the. Uh, so the thing I want to retain is the Hamming code. Okay. So the 7-4 Hamming code I want to retain. Okay. So so the generator matrix worked out as 1-0-0-0. Uh, one one zero. Did I get that right? Okay, zero one zero zero. Uh, what did I do? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What did I get? I got one 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 zero. Then one zero one one, and then. 0, 1, 1, 1, right? So it's not uh, the eighth one is not there. Is it okay? This was my G, and then the corresponding H turned out as 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, this is this is what I want to retain. I want to give you a uh, feeling for what this is. Okay. So the first thing you should be able to do for at least for small examples is given the generator and parity check matrix, you should be able to easily come up with the list of code words. Okay, how many code words you have here? 16. You can easily come up with a list of code words, there's no problem. Okay, so the list of code words you can come up with. So the code itself can be computed. Okay, so I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to go through the list. Okay, so but, but just uh, that can be computed. There's no problem. All right. So and then the next thing is you can design simple encoders. When when I say design, basically you can write a program to implement this encoder. There's really no difficulty, right? So encoder can also be implemented. 
okay so these two things you should be able to do maybe in software or hardware or whatever is your interest you can easily do these two things okay but when k and n become larger and larger okay one of these things is definitely much easier than the other which one is easy which one is difficult okay yeah if, if k becomes 500 and n becomes 1000 okay i have a 500 by 1000 comma 500 code my generator matrix becomes a 500 by 1000 matrix if i have to list out all the code words of my code it's pretty much impossible but i can still do encoding today with reasonable complexity right so you know, maybe you have to store a huge matrix and remember it okay but that's okay you can do that and you can implement your encoder but still when k and n become larger and larger encoding is also a problem okay so think about complexity of these two things and you'll get a feel for what's possible and what's not possible so typically people simplify this much further also okay so we'll do that we'll come back and address that problem of how to simplify encoders okay so that one one code we'll consider as a very very simple encoder also okay so we'll do that as we go along okay so those are things to think about but one thing we have not addressed so far is what decode okay so you have to decode it's not not enough if i give you a fancy generator matrix or paradigmatic matrix how do you use it at the decoder okay so once again you have all those methods available to you there are two different basically different ways of decoding what are the two ways one is hard decision another is soft decision Okay, so these hard decision and soft decision decoders are very easy to describe. Okay, I can I'll describe it very easily, but when it comes to implementation, some of them become more difficult. Okay, so that's what we're going to see next. So how do you go about decoding these uh, these simple codes? And I'll mostly use the 7-4 Hamming code as an example. Okay, any questions? You're okay, all right. So one question that will come up when you decode and study its properties is what's called minimum distance. So, so far I have not defined it, I am going to define that next, okay, before we jump into the decoder. Because you will see when, when I can describe the decoder to you, but if you want to analyze it, you will need to know something called the minimum distance. Okay, so if you go back to a way we analyzed our ML decoder, okay, remember I was searching for the error paths which are smallest distance away from each other. Okay, so it turns out in the coding scenario to understand minimum distance, okay, so there are so many different ways of thinking about it. Okay. So finally, when you want to do decoding, you'll have to do detection on a high dimensional constellation, right? I gave you that description also. So eventually when you do coding, you're not doing symbol by symbol. So your constellation is not very simple. It's actually a, if you do Hamming code, it's your constellation is over seven dimensions. Okay. And given a point, you have to find the nearest neighbor. That will only fix your probability of error, right? So how do you do approximate probability of error analysis? Find the nearest, closest neighbor, then do Q of d by 2 sigma multiply that by the number of neighbors you have that's an approximate estimate of probability of error so to find my nearest neighbor i have to know given my constellation point which is the closest neighboring constellation point okay so in the coded scenario minimum distance and closest neighbors are very closely related and for all that you need to know this minimum distance notion okay so that's what i'm going to introduce next Okay, so at least in BPSK and all that, it's very, very useful to know this minimum distance separation. Okay, so I'll assume we have an NK code C, NK linear code C. If I enumerate all the code words, I'll have what? C1, C2, so on till C, 2 power K, the 2 power K I'll call as M, okay, which is my size of the code. Okay, so this is the code word that I have. Okay. So remember, when you think of the expanded signal constellation with the code word, it's going to be seven dimensional. And how do you go from symbols to code word, from code word to symbol? You do zero to plus one, one to minus one. So it's a huge dimension. It's tough to imagine what it is. Okay. So in that, such in such a picture, I want to find the closest point. That's that's my aim. Okay. But I will do it in binary. I won't do it after I go from zero to plus one and minus one. I'll do it in binary. You'll see it's closely related. It's not it's not all that different. Okay. So for that minimum distance is useful. So here's the definition of minimum distance. D is minimum over C i C j in, okay, so I don't even have to write C i C j, sorry, i and j between 1 and m, i not equal to j, what's called the Hamming distance between C i and C j. Okay, so I have to define what's Hamming distances. Okay, what is Hamming distance? How many of you know? Nobody knows. Okay. So the number of places in which 
two vectors differ okay so that's hamming distance let me define that dh between u and v is this i can do a mathematical definition but i'll just simply write it down so number of positions where u and v differ okay so if you want to write, my write a mathematical definition it's the size of i between 1 and n suppose u is a u and v are length n vectors okay so u is u1 to un and v is v1 to vn number of i such that what ua is not equal to vi it's the size of that set okay so there's e there's there's a nice way of uh there's a nice relationship between hamming distance and what's called hamming weight okay hamming weight is u is number of ones in u that's the definition okay and there's a nice relationship between these two guys which is hamming distance between u and v can be written as the hamming weight of some vector what is that vector u x or v you see that see what does xor do if this equal it makes it zero and if it's not equal it makes it one okay so if to count the number of places in which they differ you can xor the vectors and then look at the number of ones in that vector okay which is hamming weight so all these things are definitions so now if you go back to the minimum distance of a chord okay so if you go back to this definition what does this definition ask you to do if you have to given a chord if you have to find its minimum distance what should you do select all possible pairs from your code word code words how many possibilities are there flee m squared right so m squared is 2 power 2k okay so it's exponential definitely in k it's a large number if you want an exact number what is the exact number m choose 2 right m times m minus 1 by 2 okay, if you are careful about it you can do that roughly m squared so 2 power 2k so it's clearly exponential in k so it's a large computation it's very difficult to do this okay so it's possible to still keep it exponential and make it make the complexity slightly lesser from m square to m you can come okay how do you do that how do you go from m square to m you use the relationship between hamming distance and hamming weight and the linearity of the code you can go from m square to m okay but still it turns out you can't go much much below m okay so this problem has been proven to be very very difficult it seems like a silly problem right you give you a generator matrix and parity check matrix find the minimum distance of the code it turns out it's difficult obviously it's not difficult for k equals 3 and n equals 7 okay so when is it difficult when k is 2000 and n is 3000 it turns out it's difficult to find the minimum distance but but it, but we can go from m square to m by using the simple relationship so how do you go from m square to m you can quickly argue that this is minimum over okay i said i gave you the definition ij i not equal to j the hamming distance between ci and cj but you know this is the same as the hamming weight of ci xor cj okay but what do i know about ci xor cj it has to be equal to cl for some one less than l less than m okay but it cannot be one code word okay so one thing i never uh, stressed is if i equals j then ci x or cj will become zero okay so that cannot happen so it has to be a non zero code word in the code okay that's the only relationship so once once you do that you can see it's easy to write this minimum over c in the code hamming weight of c okay so we have gone from m squared to m Okay, 2 power 2k to 2 power k. So it's no reduction at all. Nobody will consider that as a reduction in complexity. But anyway, it's still uh, some some comfort at least for proving and simple problems. This is very very useful. Okay, is that clear? So the minimum distance of a linear code, which is technically defined as the minimum separation, if you will, between any two code words, is the same as what? The minimum number of ones in any non-zero code word. okay right so it's like saying this so if i give you a finite number of points and they form a linear subspace 
to find the minimum separation between any two of them it's enough to go to the origin just sit at the origin and look for the closest point and that will be the same as from any other point also the reason is the whole thing is linear and you can shift origins to any code word and the picture looks exactly the same okay so it's tough to visualize this if you're used to only real spaces okay so this is not a real space it's hamming so it becomes a little bit twisted but that's the principle okay so we have five minutes left so we'll see two simple examples and then i'll pick up slightly more complicated examples in the in the next uh, class so the first example i want to have is uh, n comma one repetition code what will be the minimum distance okay d will be n you see that it's very easy to see you have just two code words just look for the vector non-zero code word with minimum weight it will be n okay it's just only one non-zero vector okay slightly more twisted example is to look at n comma n minus one even weight code even weight code or even parity code so what will be d for this I think a lot of people who know the answer is giving me the answer but it has to be 2 okay so convince yourself that you can prove this so how do you prove this okay how do you prove this okay the one I'm sorry okay I think people who are doing the self study course should not answer this question <laughs> how do you prove this yeah that's all so just look at it look at the generator matrix and the parity check matrix okay right this code has 2 power n minus 1 vectors it seems complicated but if you look at the parity check matrix what is the parity check matrix it's got all how many ones it's got n ones right that is the parity check matrix and any code word of this even weight code has to be such that h times c transpose is 0 so you have to look at that closely and try to figure out the small the smallest number of ones that c can have so that h time c transpose is zero and the best way of doing it is to work exhaustively starting with the least weight possible okay so you might say i'll come up with a clever way but it can be very very deceiving okay so this problem is a very complicated problem so the best way of solving it is to simply start with you're not allowed to start with all zero okay so obviously h time zero will be zero but you're not allowed that because you want a non-zero code word okay minimum weight of non-zero code word then what is the least weight possible for a non-zero code word one Okay, but one if you pick what will happen it will be one so you won't be h times c transpose will not be zero so the next step is to go to two and two you can pick and you know definitely d will be two. okay that is the only way of proving this result okay you might come up with some very clever way unless you are very confident and you write it down precisely there is no other way of proving this result okay in this case there might be some special easy ways okay in a general situation if i give you a parity check matrix and you have to find the least weight non-zero code word this is the only way of doing it start with all of course you don't start with all zero start with vectors of weight one vectors of weight two vectors of weight three slowly exhaustively finish everything and stop at a point where you find the first one okay all right so we'll stop here